Hello again, whiskey friends. Thanks for joining everybody for another whiskey review. And today we are going to be reviewing another fantastic rye whiskey. That has been the theme all year throughout 2024. Fantastic and unique rye whiskeys. Today's review is going to follow along those same lines. So what we're going to be talking about today is a new release from Hard Truth. This one is got a very, very long title here. Hard Truth Master Distillers Reserve Sweet Mash Rye 2024 Blend. And note down here all of these different numbers. It's got mash bill 3, 4, and 6. That's going to come into play as I get into the details there. So thank you for joining today, Whiskey Friends. Let's kick off the show. Myself poured a little sample there for us to taste together as we go through the tasting notes and go through the review. We'll let that open up for just a second here. Let's go through this particular bottle here and some of the details. I'll pull it up here. So this is a new release from Hard Truth that is dropping in September of 2024. They are dropping a whole lot of new releases. Now, full disclosure on this one, Hard Truth did send me this bottle, something that they made me say I would say if I were to ever talk about it. Did plan to buy one of these anyway when I am at Hard Truth, actually just like five days away from recording, but was very happy to get a preview here because now I know what to do when I get to the distillery on this one. But it is going to run $90 acquired from Hard Truth. If you're not familiar, if Hard Truth is in your area or not, go to their website. They actually got like a website where you can do like a find if it's in my area or if it's in my state and what store it's on. So they got like a little locator there for all their products. This one comes in at 115 proof. And I went on a few sites. I think I even went on Hard Truth's own site and found that it was age dated at five years, though that stat is not on the bottle itself. Now, what is most important about this particular blend is what I was pointing out earlier, the mash bill three, four, and six. So if you were to go through the backlog of all of our reviews or go through Hard Truth's offerings on their website, you're going to find that they have a lot of unique rise beyond their standard mash bill one. This is then a blend of all of the unique mash bills that they do. So walking through this, mash bill number three is the chocolate malt, which represents 20% of this blend. Mash bill number four is the caramel malt, which represents 50% of this blend. And mash bill number six is the malted rye, which represents 30% of this blend. Now on the channel, we have been in love with the caramel rye since the beginning. But particularly last year, we put batch two in our end of year blind tournament and it performed very very well it was one of two hard truth bottles in that head-to-head -head tournament so for this one to be a blend of all those unique mash bills on paper i was very very skeptical that this was going to work i love the caramel rye and i really didn't understand how the unique flavors of the caramel rye and the chocolate rye or the chocolate malted rye and the malted rye were all going to come together to make something uh, particularly unique. And yeah, I am really excited to get into this with you today because yeah, I'm a bit blown away by this and you're going to see how much I am by the end of this video. So we're going to go into the nose, the palate, and the finish on this. We'll go through the tasting notes and then we'll get to the final scores. So thank you for joining today, whiskey friends. Cheers, everybody. Now, the nose on this one, the nose is probably my least favorite part, though I do like the flavors of the nose. Uh, it doesn't have necessarily a lot of depth to it. It feels almost a little bit flat. It doesn't give you a good preview of what's going to happen on the palate. 
the main note that I get on the nose, and I'll get this again, uh, I believe, on the front palate. It's essentially a butterscotch custard donut. So if you picture one of those custard-filled donuts, but it's got like that grayed a tan cream on the top of it, that's a butterscotch cream. It's like that type of donut is what I smell in a donut shop. There's also a lot of fruits going on, uh, a lot of cereal notes too. So I'd equate that to almost a strawberry or a berry special K. There's a bit of black pepper and then that chocolate malt ends up coming through a bit more and more. Presents itself more as a espresso or more specifically, maybe like a mocha. Along the same lines as the donut mentioned earlier, there's also what I would describe as like a cinnamon French toast going on. Something doughy, something fried, something thick with batter. Um, and, you know, that thickness has that like egg and all those spices in it. So a whole bunch of breakfast foods, quite frankly. We're talking donuts, special K cereal, and some great French toast. All right, that takes us through the nose. On the nose, I am going to give this a thumbs up. So not completely in love with the nose, but it is doing some really positive things from a flavor standpoint. Let's get into the palate. Mm. Oh, this is going to be a really hard one to talk through because the finish on this is quite strong and it is relentless right now. But let's focus more on front palate. Going to go back to kind of the butterscotch notes, uh, that butterscotch custard donut will continue to come through accompanied by this beautiful melody of fruits. You know, that's always something that sticks out with the hard truth rise are the fruit notes that come across on this rye. There's also a bit of like a French vanilla, almost like that French vanilla ice cream that's got the specks and the spice in it. Uh, a bit of chocolate as well. So that chocolate continues to come through. That chocolate's even like a chocolate bar infused with orange. So lots of things going on here. Lots of things that you can break apart. Still tasting that finish, by the way, which is why I said it's going to be hard to talk through it. Lovely, creamy mouthfeel as well really coats just all parts of the palate the entire time. You really want to chew on that one. Hmm. Let me go in for another sip, see if I got anything else. Oh, man. On that transition from front to mid, it does darken quite a bit. That butterscotch turns more into a dark, hard caramel kind of flavor. So that does darken up. Um, the mocha flavors really escalate. So it does have this nice transition into mid palate. Man, that custard really comes through too. Yeah. It's like all of those same flavors. They just darken up a bit more and become more pronounced. So on the palate here, all in all, I'm giving this thing two thumbs up. I mean, I think it's just absolutely delicious especially when you pull in like a a butterscotch custard donut on the palate i mean that's gonna make my toes curl let's get into the finish oh and then honestly at the finish it's a lot of all the same notes but the volume on everything just continues to escalate you almost don't expect it to escalate to the point that it does. And then the volume just keeps rising on all these flavors that I'm talking about. Lovely, lovely crescendo. Um, other thing on the finish, the stone fruits really emerge a bit more as well. They take kind of better shape. Um, and the, the finish here, so what I'm tasting that won't relent, is essentially a... Uh, espresso with sweet cream. So if you like that combination there, you know, if you even get like a, a nitro cold brew with some sweet cream or something like that, 
that's what we're talking about in the finish, not to discard the amount of fruits that are still happening on the finish as well. All right. One more sip, and then we'll finish up the finish here. Oh, it's just so beautiful. No, I think that pretty much calls everything out. I'm still getting that custard donut as well on the finish. Beautiful, beautiful whiskey. Um, very, very surprised by what's happening here. So on the finish, gave that two thumbs up as well. So as you can see, this is trending very, very positively. Let's get into the scores now. So here on the channel, we do have a three-tier score system broken up by flavor, experience, and value. On the flavor, gave this an 87.5, really, really into it. I think the main place that it lost a few points was the nose, because the nose really does not present itself or give you a preview of how deep and dark and rich the flavors are about to be throughout the experience and then into the finish. Experience, though, once again, it lost some points on the nose, but otherwise, I mean, the depth is there. It's nice and creamy. The finish is awesome. And then in terms of being a balance of a blend, I would not have expected this to work on paper, blending these three unique mash bills together because they are really, really different. If you drink these separately, and I didn't expect them to fill the holes and deficiencies that are independent on each of these mash bills in this blend, which is essentially what does happen in the end. So value on this one at $90. I do plan to buy another one of these when I'm at the distillery. So I'm going to share what is left in this bottle with Kelsey and Darrell so that they can enjoy it as well. But I've already given them the heads up like, hey, when we're at the distillery, you should buy this one. So I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. All in all, then, we are talking about a score of an 89 out of 100. I actually had to do a double take when I did the summation of the scores because all of these metrics are essentially calculated independent of each other. And then you get the sum of the parts. And when I saw an 89, I was like, that is too high of a score. And then I went through all the metrics and I couldn't figure out if there was any adjustments that were needed. I was fine with each independent metric where I left it. What is very strange about the construction of this particular score is that it got there without any tens outside of value. It's just eight and nines across the board. Ah, so in the end, there is a little bit of a tie going on at 89 on the scoring system, but that is a multi-way tie for third place out of 63 reviews done this year, which then puts it in the top 20 of all reviews since we began the scoring system out of 225 bottles. So... What that also means is we're going to have to buy some more of this one in order for it to be in our end of year tournament and to see what this crazy thing can do in a blind and if it can stick out amongst all the other whiskeys that are going to be in there. Other surprising thing yet again, this is another great rye whiskey to highlight and not a stereotypical 95.5 rye that we've been used to over the years. These brands like Hard Truth and so many others are just completely radicalizing what the rye category is. And this is another expression to show that. So that concludes my thoughts on the hard truth. Once again, this one is the Masters Distiller Reserve Sweet Mash Rye 2024 blend. And one last thing on this, I did do a little head-to-head -head comparison with that caramel malt side by side. And this thing blows it away. And that thing was in our tournament last year. So don't sleep on this one. This might actually be the best non-single barrel that I've gotten from Hard Truth yet. So if you've had this, let me know in the comments what you think of it, if you plan to pick it up, and if you've heard of this for the first time, once again, be sure to go to Hard Truth's website, see if it's going to be hitting your state. So thank you for joining today, whiskey friends. We'll catch you on the next whiskey review. Goodbye, everybody.